It's about the survival of our culture and who we are. Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Wapiti Rose Amador LeBeau and this is Native Voice TV so welcome to the show I'd like to welcome Michael Smith he's with the American Indian Film Festival of San Francisco correct and welcome mm -hmm. but first let's tell me about your tribes well Rose I'm from I was born in South Dakota okay. in Siston South Dakota I'm enrolled at the Fort Peck Reservation in Montana and I actually grew up in Seattle. Oh, you did? You know, so I went through high school and college in, in Seattle and uh -huh. still have, a, you know, family in Seattle and Montana, mostly in, mostly in Montana. Ah. So I've been down here in the Bay Area for, um, you know, since 1976. And a couple of stints in, one in Los Angeles for about a year and one in in uh, Washington, D.C. for about a year. Okay. But uh, call the Bay Area kind of my second home. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a film background? I have American history background. Uh -huh. And I very much, uh, you know, really got um, interested in film, you know, in the, in the early years. I think the uh, biggest in influence on my life has been, as far as film, has been uh, the movie Little Big Man uh -huh. that came out in 1972. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a student at the University of Washington at the time, and you know during that time they had a lot of Indian uh, student associations, not mm -hmm. only at the UW but you know here in Berkeley and Stanford right, right. and all over the place. So I was um, involved with our student group. We had a Indian Awareness Week on campus, and you know we. Uh, invited Chief Dan George down to our event to, to speak. And Dan was from uh, Vancouver, BC, uh, North Vancouver. And um, we just called him, his attorney, and they set it up and you know, that's when I first met him. I actually was fortunate to pick him up at the airport and ah. bring him to the, the UW and got to know him a bit. You know, at, at that time, the the film was uh, out in theaters. You know, with little big, a uh, little big man starring uh, Dustin Hoffman right. and Faye Dunaway, and and um, after the event, after he spoke at, on campus, you know, he uh, asked me if I wanted to see the movie. So I said, of course, although I had already seen it before. Uh -huh. But going to the movies with Chief Dan George, you know, sitting there and sharing popcorn and all this stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah. with a, a legend it was uh, really a powerful moment for me. And then I got to uh, know him a little bit better, you know, visited his, his family up in mm -hmm. Vancouver. And, you know, when I moved down here in the Bay Area, 1976, I came here. You know, I had never, you know, we started, I'm sorry, we, you know, we had the event, uh, at the UW, then we started the first uh, festival. The American Indian Film Festival was mm -hmm. held at the University of Washington in 1975. Mm -hmm. And again, I called on Dan to come down. We showed the film to our uh, people there, uh, mostly composed of uh, Indian families in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So Dan came and, you know, introduced Little Big Man and, you know, signed autographs for all our, our people there and 
And I moved to the, the Bay Area in uh, 76 and uh, had no really intention of, you know, the, the film festival. You know, we did it one time at the mm -hmm. time and I didn't think it was going to be something that would be continued. Mm -hmm. You know, I was actually on my way to Los Angeles to work for the Indian Center. Oh. And I was coming through here, the Bay Area, and I knew some people here in, in Oakland and um, stayed here for a couple of days, what I thought was going to be a couple of days. And, you know, I was in an auto accident oh. and I had to wait for my car to get fixed. And my position at the Indian Center, they had a, a freeze on new employees, new hires. Oh. So I was kind of stuck. You know, I was here in the in Oakland, getting my car fixed, and then really kind of uncertain, waiting for this new position to open up. And thinking in, during that time, you know, I I was kind of fortunate to to find that the director of Intertribal Friendship House in Oakland was a friend from Seattle, yeah. and uh, so I have a background in graphics, and I. Uh, he said, can you do this, can you do that? Mostly some posters and mm -hmm. uh, brochures and things like that. And I said, yeah, I can do that. So that's kind of how I got started <laughs> here in, in the area. And then I met uh, Tom Phillips, who is a, a longtime friend. Uh, Tom was uh, the director of the San Francisco Indian Center at the time. And um, Tom was just on the show a couple months ago. <laughs> hmm. So Tom was saying that he had a position that was open in kind of public relations. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I can do that. So I ended up at the Indian Center. And, um, you know, he had a grant with the San Francisco Foundation for some media type of work within the Indian Center. And I was telling Tom about my experience with the American Indian Film Festival, how we had done this program in, in the spring of 75 and, you know, the impact it had on the community and, you know, trying to build up a little bit more media presence mm -hmm. for American Indians way back then. And during that time, the, uh, you know, the free speech movement from, the, from Berkeley in the late 60s and a lot of things were opening up in media, like public service programming, public service right, announcements, right. all had its start, you know, I think mostly from here in the Bay Area, you know, so, you know, there's a group called Chinese for Affirmative Action that was really in the forefront during the, that uh, time period, the late 70s, and um, really pressing for uh, minority coverage and, you know, uh, free speech uh, talking about you know what they're doing in their Chinese community mm -hmm. so we met with their their agency talking about how we can really improve media coverage for American Indians here in the Bay Area so we we put together a conference in 1977 sponsored by the San Francisco Indian Center and with that conference, we put together the second American Indian Film Festival. And we booked the Palace of Fine Arts to show that, the films, and had this conference. And, you know, during that time, there's a lot of young Native people that were really uh, on the verge of really wanting to say something through media. And a lot of them were, you know, recent graduates, you know, of college. And a lot of them were doing work in their community with new newspapers and, you know, newsletters and, you know, some public events. And so we pulled together a, a pretty comprehensive conference, uh, you know, with uh, a lot of the, the media regulatory groups in Washington, the Federal Communications Commission, mm -hmm. National Association of Broadcasters. And um, we brought all these people together, National Telecommunications and Information Administration, who was really, at, the, at that time, was really looking at radio and developing non-commercial radio for reservations. Oh. 
So we brought a lot of those type of uh, media people into the conference and we had over 200 young people coming into San Francisco, attending the conference and then going to our film program. So that was the beginning here in the Bay Area with the festival. We had, uh, you know, approximately 20 films, I believe, we showed during the first... How many do you have now? Well, it fluctuates every year. You have you a know. lot of entries, right? And yeah, you have we do. a whole process that you go through to yeah, we do. We do. decide what you're going to be showing? Yeah. We had, uh, this year, we had about 162 entries that wow. came in. And we've kind of pared it down to, uh, I think we have 67 films that we're showing during our event, November 1 through November 8. But a lot, a lot of things has happened, you know, from, you know, 1975 mm -hmm. when we began to 77 when we first started here in the Bay Area. You know, the, uh, the growth of film has really been uh, big, you know, uh, especially with uh, digital video that has come maybe in the last 10 years. You know, mm -hmm. it's making it a little bit more affordable right. for uh, filmmakers. You know, at the, in the early, early years, you know, we were just dealing with, uh, you know, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter films that mm -hmm. uh, kind of limited, you know, the scope of films we right. had. And, and um, you know, with, with first with video, when that came in in like the mid 80s, we had grown from like maybe 20 films at the most to, you know, starting to get into, you know, 60, 70 films that were being submitted. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in those early years, you know, it was hard to, uh, you know, to, uh, to screen video, you know, so it was kind of limiting, you oh, know, yeah. as far as exhibition. Right. We're still kind of mostly showing film and, you know, with video, there's some advances going on where you could rent uh, video projectors, the infancy of video projection. Mm -hmm. And at that time, video projectors costed about uh, six or seven thousand dollars to rent. Wow. You know, so it's really, you know, yeah. uh, quite a, a difference thing. Time has changed a lot, you know, for video projection. But still, you know, we, we, uh, we, we have a lot of uh, feature films that are shot on digital. And, um, you know, this year we have, um, I think we have seven feature films that are oh, in the yeah. festival. Our staple has always been the documentary. We really pride ourselves on really the outstanding documentary films that, you know, we've presented through the years. Mm -hmm. You know, this year we're opening with a, uh, a documentary about the Nez Perce of uh, Idaho, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with their, their relationship with the horses, you know, the Appaloosa horse and, you know, dealing with uh, human issues and interaction and tribal mm -hmm. relations. It's kind of a, a 60 minute documentary that touches a lot of bases, you know, because uh, the film kind of centers around the director of the horse program, who is uh, Navajo, mm -hmm. transplanted up to Idaho working in this horse program. And, you know, the animosity still, you know, that we have of you know, uh, another tribal person in another mm -hmm. tribal community working in that community. So there's a lot of issues that uh, come to the forefront, but, you know, it's still a, a very powerful film, you know, and just really kind of shows Indian people, you know, and in, in what we're doing in a contemporary life mm -hmm. style, especially on a reservation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you brought a couple clips for us to watch. Which, what did you bring? We did bring Horse Tribe, which is our opening night film, and you know I think we have a clip from that. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Just the smell of horses, the knicker. Just, I'm a part of it. I was selected to run the tribal horse program. It's like a dream. Hell, he's a damn sheep herder from Navajo. The animosity been between tribes. That's the reason we lost this whole country in the first place. So this will be showing opening night then? It is. Oh, we're we're actually uh, we're opening at the uh, AMC Metreon, 
downtown San Francisco, 4th okay. and Mission. We're going to be there through uh, Saturday, November 8th. We do have uh, matinees uh, on Sunday, the 2nd of November through Wednesday. But we do have evening programs all through the week at 7 o'clock p.m. Our website um, details everything in our festival. What is that website? It's uh, AmericanIndianFilmFestival.com. Okay. You can go to that and, you know, we uh, have a nice, uh, prof we have clips of different movies on there and uh, full descriptions. Okay. Ticket pricing is uh, very uh, reasonable, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's their $10 oh, yeah. for the evening, uh, $15 tickets for opening night and closing night of our festival. And, you know, we, we have advanced tickets available through our website. You can go to uh, Eventbrite is handling our advanced tickets. You know, but um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our, our awards mm -hmm. show. And that is on Sunday, on Sunday, okay. November 9th. Okay. It's the last uh, day of our program. You know, we uh, we started this. Uh, we call it the American Indian Motion Picture Awards mm -hmm. Show, and uh, we started that in 1978. And uh, something that has kind of grown through all these years. You know, in the early years, you know, we. And when you had maybe, a, at the most, a dozen films to show, you'd probably hand out maybe five, six awards or so. Mm -hmm. And the program generally lasted only an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, now it's really, since uh, 1999, it's been a, uh, a full-fledged show. So it does last about three and a half hours. Wow. <laughs> so we do have a lot of... That um, is something awards that are presented. We have um, 15 awards that will be handed out on the November 9th. This is at the Palace of Fine Arts okay. in San Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, starting in the That's afternoon. That's a really nice venue. It is, it is, yeah. And uh, it's at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And we are planning to uh, tape the show. It will be shot uh, on that uh, November 9th at 5 p.m. We are planning to edit the program down to 90 minutes mm -hmm. and planning to televise it. Oh, great. And um, we will be, um, we're working with a seminal broadcasting uh, uh -huh. company out of uh, uh, Hollywood, Florida. They're going to do all our post work. We're shooting the film, shooting the show. All the work will be done in, in Florida. And from Florida, we'll send out our, our uh, masters to uh, a TV station in Seattle, Kong TV. Uh, here in the Bay Area, we're on Coffee Channel 20. Oh, we'll be great. in uh, San Diego and also in Phoenix and in Florida. Oh, that's wonderful. The whole purpose of this whole award show uh, shoot and broadcast is really to give some visibility to our films, our actors, our performing artists. You know, it's very difficult uh, to see any Indian people other than Hollywood you know, Indians. Hollywood <laughs> the other Indians, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. you know, uh, maybe rare glimpses of Indian mm -hmm. actors maybe at a, another festival right. or another film at another festival. Or maybe seeing an Indian, you know, in maybe at a at maybe performing at a concert or mm -hmm. a festival or something. Not in mainstream. Not in mainstream, mm -hmm. and that's the whole purpose. You know, we really want to bring some visibility to our our people, our films. You know, we get asked all the time. You know, where where do you get these Indian films, and where are the Indian films? And you know, we we say, well, you can come to our festival. You see maybe 70 plus films, you know, but what happens to these films, you know, and that's what we really want to bring some light, spotlight on, you know, where these films are, who mm -hmm. the makers are, where do you access these uh, documentaries and these features, you know, so it's really, I think, an important part of our growth, you know, that we really start, uh, you know, taking advantage, even if it's, we have to take advantage, you know, we That's have true. to kind of step out and say, 
you know, no CBS, NBC, ABC, any of the uh, big cable groups aren't coming to, coming to us and saying we want an award show on Indian people on right. our network. So it's really kind of up to us as Indian people, as an Indian organization, to put our efforts and make good use of what we do. You know, we have uh, That's great. much talent in our community. You know, we have performers that are, you know, working, you know, trying to make livings as, uh, you know, performers, as singers, as, you know, as uh, comedians, mm -hmm. you know, and as dancers, you know, but uh, it's rare for the American public to see who these people are. That's true. So that's uh, what we're hoping to do this year. You know, we have a Kickstarter campaign Right now, people can go to uh, our site, uh, AmericanIndianFilmFestival.com, get information on our Kickstarter campaign. We have uh, made deposits on these TV stations already. Mm -hmm. So we have our date locked, November 29. Here in the Bay Area, we're going to be uh, on Coffee TV 20 uh, Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday, November 29 at uh, six o'clock in the evening, which is actually a pretty good time. It is, it is. So we're gonna have a very uh, a big, uh, hopefully a big, um, a lot of people tuning in for that well, we're show. We're gonna have to get the word out, and make sure everyone tunes in because yeah. that's, we've needed, it's long overdue. It is, it is. Yeah. And we only have about five minutes left, so you brought another clip? Yeah, we have another clip from our closing film called Empire of Dirt. Okay, let's take a look at that and then you can tell me what it's all about. Okay. So you know that when we hunt in packs, we're stronger, right? So take care of each other, okay? Ricky, we haven't seen you at the center. Are you gonna come back soon? Look at me. Hey, Peeks. Hey, Peeks. Pika? Hey, it's okay, I'm here, okay? We're gonna get out of here for a bit. Oh, that was great. Now, now tell me, where, what's the origin of that clip? Empire Deer. Mm -hmm. I don't know what clip we're seeing, but it's, uh, it's a family story about uh, returning home. Okay. This is the, uh, the mom, and this is her daughter, and she has some issues growing up in, in Toronto. So they return I'm going to hold this up so okay. our audience can see what we're talking okay. about here. Okay. And who put this film together? Or? The uh, producer is a uh, uh, native woman, uh, Jennifer Podemski. And Jennifer is uh, uh, an actress also. She, we, we knew her first as an actress. She's mm -hmm. really evolved, you know, mm -hmm. in the, probably the uh, 15 years that we have known her. So she is, uh, has produced the uh, Empire of Dirt. It's a story about uh, family, about uh, a mom and her daughter returning back to their their home uh, so it's a very uh, touching and warm uh -huh. and a lot of uh, I think a lot of issues are explored in today's like urban Indian situation mm -hmm. you know so I think it's really a, a film that really needs to to be seen right. so that is going to be our closing film oh good I look forward to seeing that mm -hmm. so tell me with all of these films now that enter into to be viewed at the film mm -hmm. festival, how do you narrow them down to, you said 60 some films, how do you do that? Well. Do you watch them all? I do. You do? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I watch every film that mm -hmm. comes in, mm -hmm. you know, I, so I looked at um, 150 plus films, I think, and then we recommend, all right, recommend it to our jury. We can mm -hmm. put, to, put together a jury, and they met over uh, uh, three weekends, looking at uh, many of these films and making, mm -hmm. uh, uh, evaluating them. And from that, you know, basically we pull, pull together the program and from their notes and markings, you know, we select our nominees for the, uh, the awards that are presented. Uh -huh, so okay. we'll be giving out, you know, best documentary short feature, uh -huh. best film, best music video, and the best actor, actress, supporting actor, and actress. So a number of awards to be given. 
You know, we try to uh, look at our festival and the, especially the award show as uh, a time to, uh, to remember, to honor, and mm -hmm. to celebrate. Those are three things that we really kind of try to really abide by. You know, this year, you know, we're going to be honoring, you know, all of these filmmakers that uh, come and participate, many acting awards. But we're also going to remember some friends of our festival, like Charlie Hill, mm -hmm. who was the comic that passed uh, yes. last year, uh, Billy Frank oh, yes. Jr. from the Northwest. And uh, just, just now, you know, we, we lost uh, uh, Misty Upham who was a Blackfeet yes. uh, actress. And I just returned from her service up at the Muckleshoot Indian Reservation up in Washington uh, this past Saturday. And, uh, you know, it was very, very touching uh, service she had. And uh, we're going to be remembering her at our festival, Awards That's Night, nice. with a special segment uh, for her and, and also for Charlie Hill. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to the film festival this mm -hmm. year again, mm -hmm. and I hope our audience makes it, makes the trip to San Francisco. I know it's always the buzz in November. Are you, what night are you going? Which mm -hmm. night are you going? Let's mm -hmm. a carpool, you know, from mm -hmm. San Jose to San mm -hmm. Francisco, mm -hmm. because everyone has to go to the film festival because it's a must be. Mm -hmm. Play, or place to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you would like to be there. Don't miss it. And especially, again, November 29th, is it, on the television show? Yeah, um, November 29th. November 29th, 6 p.m.? Coffee TV. Coffee TV. TV Make 20. Make sure you, TV 20, tune in for the first award show. Good night, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.